Hello and welcome to the first update on Aeodin Chronicle 100 Heroes since the end of the Kickstarter campaign. In case somehow you don't know what Aeodin Chronicle 100 Heroes is, it's a new video game project that's just started development from the creator and many other team members from the Suikoden series. The Kickstarter campaign was a huge success, it became the third most funded video game on Kickstarter ever. I made three videos about Aeodin during the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, when updates were coming almost every day. Uh, but now the fundraising campaign is over and development has begun on the game. Updates are not going to be as frequent or as lengthy, uh, so I'll probably continue to sort of group them together like this. We've had two, uh, so I'm going to do two at a time in this video, and I'll probably continue to do two or three at a time in each video. Uh, enough of that blather, let's get on with it. Uh, first things first then, this was kind of alluded to already, but the scheduled release date is October 2022, a little under two years from the time of making this video. In the first update we got a message from Murayama in which he mentions that over the last month he's created about 30 new character profiles, one of which we've now seen, it's in the second update, along with a couple of monster profiles, uh, but I'll come to those in just a minute. Uh, also, he mentions that the team would like to hear from the community about what kinds of updates they would like them to prioritize uh, over the course of development. And the main avenue of communication we have with the team is via the official Discord, so I'll uh, put a link to that in the description in case you want to jump on there. Uh, next is an update to character 109, Marcus the Skeleton King. While I say an update, we have a more detailed character portrait. If you remember when the voting took place for character 109, we only had rough mock-ups to go on and they looked like this. This guy won, and his completed portrait looks like this. Pretty cool. No updates to his profile details, but we pretty much had his full bio anyway. Next up is a little bit of artwork and lore about Euphirius VII's home region, Impershiark, home of the shark people. This is what it looks like, a village in the middle of the desert. Although it's a desert village, there's obviously some water and a few trees growing around the place. Uh, the sharks have a legend that they once lived on a large planet filled with water. The shark people make a living by fishing for sandfish that lurk in the desert using long harpoons. We get a picture of the sandfish, which is about 6 meters long, roughly the size of a small whale, and requires several shark men to catch. And we get artwork of the boats that the shark men use to sail across the desert while hunting. It uses the sail to catch the wind and also uses a rune lens as an auxiliary power source. So it seems like the shark people treat the sand of the desert the way humans treat water. Sail on top of it, catch the fish that live in it. At first I thought they caught the sandfish from the little pool of water we see in the village because the description of the village mentions nets to dry the sandfish, so I thought, oh, they must be wet when they catch them then. <laughs> um, but I thought given that that seems to be the only little bit of water for miles and that the sandfish are like six meters long, I was like, huh? But no, I think by dry the sandfish they mean like the way you dry meat to make jerky. In fact, it says right here, the fins are dried and made into a regional speciality preserved food. So glad we got that cleared up. Last up from this update, we have a new enemy design, the Corpse Witch, a type of undead created by the higher undead. Individuals created by dead countess have been found, which I found a bit confusing to read before the most recent update, which includes a monster profile for this dead countess. She's a beautiful demon that deceives people, turns them into undead, recruits them to her kin. Uh, she looks somewhere between a succubus and a vampire. We get an awesome picture of the dead countess's a castle as well, suspended by chains and, I assume, a fair amount of magic. It was a human castle once, but Dead Countess and her kin took up residence once it became abandoned. The interior of the castle is crumbling, but it's said that the top floor where the Dead Countesses are located is furnished with luxurious items in far better shape than the castle's furnishings, uh, and that undead horses raided the surrounding territory to obtain them. Another monster profile from this update, they're really going in on the undead thing at the moment it seems, is a spooky ghost! They call it the Evil Spirit, but I think Spooky Ghost would be a better name. Found in ruins and caves, they are said to be what will become of living things that die with an obsession. Next up from this update, we have a brand new character profile. Her name is Ivy, and she looks like this. She's an engineer from an imperial workshop. Her favorite food is milk. Okay. She built these two huge rune arms as a way of compensating for her diminutive stature, which she's a little bit sensitive about. We get a comment from Kawano saying, I made sure this character is just bursting with energy. You can see a faint glow around her torso as the idea is that there's a large glowing rune lens fitted to her back. And I'm sort of looking at her thinking, is there a glow around her torso? Seems like the same light reflection that's in the rest of the picture to me. There's like a glow around here, which would be like her sort of stomach midriff area, I guess. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Maybe we'll see it in the pixel art. Uh, Kawano goes on to say that uh, they think that we'll really like the way this character moves, especially once we see the pixel art. And I, for one, can't wait to see more of the pixel art. All the stuff we've seen so far has looked amazing, and yeah, I'm excited to see more. 
Also included in this update is a little word about the development process from Murayama. He talks about how difficult it is to decide between good ideas contributed from different people, how best to balance things like story and plot alongside number of dungeons and towns you might need and how to tie them all together in an enjoyable gameplay experience. Lastly, we get a word from the game's director, Osamu Kamuta. He mentions something that a lot of people have asked about during the fundraising campaign, and that's the large-scale war fights. Uh, he talks about various pieces of conversations that have been happening around this topic since they started work on the game. Questions like, uh, how are we going to show a lot of the different characters? Uh, what should it look like visually? What kind of game should it be so it's interesting to play? How can we make the war fights turn-based without just making them a visual representation of pieces on a grid? Uh, of course, we don't actually have the answers to these questions yet because they haven't been decided upon. Uh, he goes on to say that the team is in good spirits and that they are currently in the middle of developing some prototypes for battles and towns. Uh, we've seen a little bit of the battle system already, but Komuta says that in order to fulfill the idea of having different formations based on height differences in the terrain and obstacles to work around, uh, they're experimenting with implementing various different gimmicks to these prototypes. And they're also working on creating a living city through trial and error, including NPC behaviours. Uh, now obviously all of this sounds a bit vague at the moment, there isn't a whole lot of information yet about how these things will actually look or work, uh, but that's because they're still in the very early stages and they don't know how the final form of any of these things will look. Uh, I still think it's nice to know what they're working on and the kinds of things that are being considered. That's it then. Uh, I thought this video might be shorter than my previous ones and looked like I was right. I'm going to keep these updates coming throughout the game's production, uh, so hit subscribe if you want to be kept up to date. I also stream on Twitch three times a week and I do fun stuff with Suikoden, like smashing speedrun records. <laughs> I try anyway. Uh, so come on by if you're interested in that, link in the description. Uh, that's it for today then, thanks for watching. Cheers.